Hello and welcome. The physics tab in the ribbon of ANSYS Fluent software lets the user set up the physics of the problem to be solved by allowing the selection of the solver, relevant models, materials, specifying boundary conditions, etc. In this video, we will learn about the solver group of the physics tab where we will specifically learn about how to select a particular type of solver, set operating conditions and reference values for calculating the solution and more. So without further delay, let's get started. Launch ANSYS Fluent in Solution Mode Once Fluent Solver opens, go to File, Read, Mesh and select the provided mesh file to import it into the solver. The Physics tab is located to the right of the Domain tab in the ribbon. One of the groups in the Physics tab is the solver. Clicking on the general option in solver group opens the general task page. ANSYS Fluent displays the general task page here by default on startup. We have already discussed the options under mesh in the previous lesson of this course. In this lesson, we will begin our discussion with the settings under solver. Here we can specify the type of solver and velocity formulation along with whether the solution is time dependent or not. In the type of solver, the option is between pressure based and density based solvers. The pressure based solver is primarily used for incompressible and mildly compressible flows, whereas the density based solver is generally used for all types of compressible flows. In the velocity formulation, we have a choice between absolute and relative formulation options. Absolute is chosen when the fluid is not moving in most part of the domain. It is the default and the most commonly used option. The relative formulation is used in very special cases which involve moving fluid in most part of the domain. Please note that the relative velocity formulation is available only when the pressure based solver is chosen. Next, let's discuss about the time dependence of a solution. To model a fluid flow in which flow properties are independent of time, steady should be chosen. For simulations requiring the calculation of temporal evolution of the flow properties, transient should be selected. The gravity option is checked when gravitational forces are significant and affect the solution. For example, buoyancy driven flow in a natural convection problem where gravity acts on density differences due to temperature variations within the fluid. For other problems where effect of gravity is not significant, it can be left unchecked. Once enabled, we can specify the x, y and z components of gravitational acceleration vector. Apart from these, additional options namely planar, axisymmetric and axisymmetric swirl become available when solving 2D problems. For standard 2D problems without the need for applying any axisymmetric assumption, planar should be chosen when solving. When the problem is axisymmetric about x-axis, axisymmetric should be selected which makes ANSYS Fluent solve the 2D axisymmetric form of the governing equations instead of the 2D Cartesian form. Axisymmetric swirl is selected when solving swirling flow in an axisymmetric geometry. The next task page in solver group is operating conditions. Operating pressure is entered in the operating conditions window which can be seen here. For the numerical calculation of the solution, Fluent decomposes the pressure into operating pressure and the relative or gauge pressure. 
The gauge pressure is what we enter in the boundary conditions panels and in initial conditions and it's also the variable that is displayed in contours of static pressure. The purpose of the gauge pressure is that it can help to avoid problems with round off errors. When pressure changes in the fluid are small compared to the absolute pressure level. Here is an example to further understand this concept. On the left, if the operating pressure is set to zero in the operating conditions panel and we have a flow where the absolute pressure varies between 100,001 pascals and 99,999 pascals, the pressure difference only takes effect in the fifth or sixth significant figure. And since the gauge pressure and absolute pressure are the same in this case, this has the potential for round off errors in the numerical solution. On the right, the operating pressure is instead set to 100,000 pascals. Now, the maximum gauge pressure is 1 pascal. The minimum gauge pressure is minus 1 pascal. And so then, when Fluent calculates the solution, any pressure differences occur in the first significant figure which is numerically advantageous. Reference pressure location sets the location of the cell whose pressure value is used to adjust the gauge pressure field for incompressible flows that do not involve any pressure boundaries. By default, the reference pressure location is defined as 0, 0, 0. There may be cases in which we might want to move the reference pressure location, perhaps locating it at a point where the absolute static pressure is known. To change the location, enter the new x, y and z coordinates for reference pressure location. The gravity option is same as we discussed in the general task page. Any changes we do in the gravity option of general task page is reflected here in components of gravitational acceleration. However, here we get some additional options like variable density parameters and business parameters. When the energy model is turned on and gravity is enabled. Businesk parameters contains inputs that relate to Businesk model. Businesk model is used for natural convection flows to get the faster convergence than problems with density as a function of temperature. The input available is the operating temperature of Businesk model. The variable density parameters option is used only in special cases like buoyancy driven flows and for most basic problems, it is kept default. Next, let's discuss reference values. Using reference values task page, users can set the reference quantities used for computing normalized flow field variables. These reference values are used only for post-processing. The reference values can be either specified manually or calculated from the condition set on the boundary zone selected from the compute from drop down list. However, based on the boundary zones, some reference values like area and length are not updated automatically and hence they must be entered manually. For flows involving multiple moving zones, the reference cell zones are selected here for post processing relative velocities and related quantities. Let's summarize what we have learned in this lesson. We learned the role of solver group in setting up of the physics of a CFT simulation. We specifically discussed about how to select the solver in general task page which includes the type, velocity formulation and time dependency of the solution. Further, we discussed about operating pressure, gravity option and reference values. With that, let's wrap up this lesson.